Well, you made it. It is Friday, November 19th. I'm Nicole Burley, and this is News Nation Rush Hour. We are following the major breaking news story today. Kyle Rittenhouse facing a potential life sentence found not guilty on all five charges. Three and a half days of jury deliberations led to this highly anticipated moment. Kyle Rittenhouse acquitted in the deadly shootings that ignited a flashpoint in the na nationwide debate over guns, racial injustice, and police brutality. The now 18-year-old Rittenhouse choked up, lost his balance as that not guilty verdict was read aloud in the courtroom. A delighted reaction from his mother, just a few rows back hugging those around her. A more reserved response from relatives of the two men Rittenhouse shot and killed, seemingly shell-shocked by the jury's verdict. And outside the courthouse, a small group of protesters watching the verdict announced on their phones a mixed reaction, some in the crowd celebrating and cheering, others expressing their frustration with the outcome. News Nation has three correspondents live in Kenosha right now monitoring the latest reaction from people on both sides of this case. We begin with Kelly Beeson outside the courthouse. So Kelly, break down what happened in court for us today. Well, Nicole, Kyle Rittenhouse faced life in prison if convicted on the most serious count against him, which was first degree intentional homicide. And he had a very emotional reaction to the verdict today. May the jury find the defendant, Kyle H. Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. Kyle Rittenhouse with an emotional reaction to the verdict. The jury weighing two weeks of testimony for three and a half days. Just in terms of your um, the attentiveness and the cooperation that you gave to us, uh, this justifies the confidence that the founders of our country placed in you. Rittenhouse was charged with homicide, attempted homicide, and recklessly endangering safety for killing two men and wounding a third. Rittenhouse was found not guilty on all five counts. Earlier in the trial, the judge dismissing a weapons charge that carried a nine-month sentence. The shootings took place during a night of protests last summer. Protests that erupted after the shooting of Jacob Blake by a Kenosha police officer. Prosecutors portrayed Rittenhouse as the instigator of the violence, while Rittenhouse claimed on the stand he was acting in self-defense. I didn't do anything wrong. I defended myself. And that turned out to be the verdict in this case that Kyle Rittenhouse did, in fact, act in self-defense. Nicole. All right, yeah, Kelly, you've been out there for us uh, for many days now. We appreciate your coverage on this. And President Biden stopped for reporters outside the White House after his annual physical and colonoscopy today. Didn't comment on the verdict, but did defend the jury system. I didn't watch the trial, so I, you know. I stand by what the jury has concluded. The jury system works and we have to abide by it. All right, so let's go back outside the courtroom. Mixed emotions from the crowd gathered there outside the Kenosha County Courthouse as those not guilty verdicts were read inside. Let's get right to News Nation correspondent Brian Enton. Brian, you were there today as well. You spoke to several people, some happy, some upset about that verdict. Yeah, Nicole, you know, there's been so much anticipation for this verdict. You could feel the tension building here in Kenosha over the last couple of days. Uh, and outside uh, the courthouse, when the verdict was finally read, a lot of people had their cell phones in the air listening. Uh, it was emotional on both sides. Innocent! A crowd of about 30 protesters outside the Kenosha County Courthouse when the verdict was read. We, the jury, find the defendant, Kyle H. Ritt Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. The reaction mixed, but for Kyle Rittenhouse, his spokesman says he can finally move on with his life. What does his life look like moving forward in terms of, I mean, he needs security right now to leave the courthouse. He's become a target in a lot of ways. Well, we'll see. We'll see. He's become a target until, I believe, until this trial began. And when a lot of truth came out, I've said this before, a lot of truth came out in this trial. That, that just were in opposition to everything that's been reported for the past year. Rittenhouse's attorney says he had faith if the jurors followed the law, this would be the outcome. That if you read that statute correctly, I know everybody thought I was crazy, 
If you read the statute correctly, he was legal in having that firearm. The parents of one of the men killed by Kyle Rittenhouse in Kenosha in 2020 released a statement after the verdict. Anthony Huber's parents say, we are heartbroken and angry that Kyle Rittenhouse was acquitted in his criminal trial for the murder of our son, Anthony Huber. There was no justice today for Anthony or for Mr. Rittenhouse's other victims, Joseph Rosenbaum and Gage Grosskrauts. For this to happen in 2021, it's upsetting to us, but it should be upsetting to everybody out there in the audience. Jacob Blake's uncle, Justin Blake, reacting to the verdict outside the courthouse. Jacob's police-involved shootings sparked protests and riots in Kenosha, where Rittenhouse shot the three men. What's your message to people upset protesters out on the streets? They should be. I mean, look what happened. Who? I mean, how many cases do you need to see of... Caucasian cops or other people walking out the door after murdering people that were either African American or supporting African Americans. Do you have a message, though, for people who don't have good intentions that are going to go out and, you know, we don't want to see what happened last time? Well, we ask everybody to recognize human life, uh, to uh, try not to hurt and harm each other. And things are very, very calm right now. There's really any protesters out here at all, maybe five to ten uh, protesters max. Uh, the sheriff told us that there is a plan in place if things get out of hand. They've got additional crews ready to go, uh, and we know the National Guard is also on standby. Nicole? Well, Brian, that's what I wanted to ask you about. I know you've covered many protests. You've been in the heart of many of those protests. Again, we saw some of that video from last year. There were fires. Uh, there were reports of looting. I mean, things certainly got out of control. A state of emergency was declared. So the sheriff talked about a plan in place. Did he detail anything that is planned? Well, he's not giving a lot of details, but I'll tell you this. Every time there's been a little bit of a moment where there's a fight outside the courthouse over la the last couple of days, there are these white vans that show up, and all of a sudden, like, 10 or 15 SWAT members get out. So they've definitely sort of got people waiting in the wings in case things get out of hand. But my sense right now is that it is very, very calm, uh, and the hope is that it will stay that way tonight. Yeah, certainly the hope there. All right, Brian, thank you so much for that. Well, as Brian just told us, a small group of protesters gathered outside the courthouse after that verdict was announced. And really all week, we've seen small crowds among the mass of media outside. News Nation's Kelsey Kernstein, also live in Kenosha 4. So, Kelsey, what are you seeing right now? Well, I got to tell you this, Nicole, we've been here since Monday and it's quite peaceful right now on the courthouse steps. Just a couple of protesters, their sign saying justice, not fracture. Another sign saying Kyle free. But other days we've seen dozens of protesters out there at this time and many times chanting Black Lives Matter, chanting convict Kyle, lock him up. But right now, no chance and really quite peaceful. We do know National Guard troops, they're on standby, U.S. Marshals on standby, high security at the courthouse right now and all around this area, choppers in the air. But this was a very different scene than what we saw right after that verdict came through. Just like Brian was saying, you know, we had several groups saying cracks in the justice system, but then other groups saying the Constitution is not dead. Another man I spoke to said we are relieved and joyful by this verdict, Nicole. All right, and Kelsey, we're taking a, a live look there now, and I know you mentioned the, the helicopters there, and I don't know if you're able to tell, uh, because it is such a small crowd, is that a law enforcement helicopter? Is that a helicopter that belongs to some type of media? Are, are you able to tell? You know, at one point, I do believe one of them was Marine One, but the rest of them have been, uh, they've just been media groups. So it's really, I got to say, it is calm. It is calmer than we've seen this entire week. So that is an interesting thing to point out. But again, there's a lot of security in this area right now. All right, Kelsey, we appreciate that live look for us. Thank you. Well, today's decision, of course, shining a spotlight on gun laws and how they vary from state to state. The Rittenhouse gun charge may have seemed like a slam dunk for the prosecution, but the judge dismissed it on a technicality. News Nation anchor Rudabe Shabazi is here, so Rudabe, explain why that charge did not stick. Well, most states, Nicole, including Wisconsin, do place a limit on the right to self-defense. Rittenhouse brought an AR-15 style rifle loaded with 30 rounds of ammunition to a volatile situation, which he then used to kill two people. But in Wisconsin, it all comes down to the length of the barrel. 
On the surface, it looked like prosecutors' Everybody easiest task would be convicting Kyle Rittenhouse of a much less significant charge, being a minor in possession of a firearm. But Rittenhouse's defense team dug up an exception just hours before jurors got the case. Under Wisconsin law, anyone under 18 who possesses a dangerous weapon is guilty of a misdemeanor punishable by up to nine months in prison. However, Wisconsin law applies to minors armed with rifles or shotguns only if those weapons are short barreled. The language stems from a bill signed into law in 1991 when lawmakers across the country were trying to find ways to curb gang violence, likely intended to prevent youths from carrying sawed off shotguns. Rittenhouse's AR 15 style rifle was not short barreled, and that's why the defense asked for the charge to be dismissed. Initially, he refused, but the judge did ultimately dismiss the gun charge. I personally don't like people carrying AR 15s around. You know, there was so much anger and so much fear in Kenosha on August 25th that people did arm themselves. And, I, I, you know, we knew from the beginning that if you read that statute correctly, I know everybody thought I was crazy. If you read the statute correctly, he was legal in having that firearm. And obviously, once the evidence came in, the judge threw the charge. Um, they threw the curfew. And... Those were things that the state wanted to, you know, kind of hang their hat on so they could argue he couldn't be there, he couldn't own the gun. Civil rights attorney Ben Crump issued this statement on the verdict. Rittenhouse, a self-declared white nationalist, crossed state lines with an unlawfully possessed AR-15 to be an instigator and provocateur in the anti-racism protests in Kenosha. By the end of the night, he had killed two people and left others injured in his wake. And instead of being arrested on the spot by law enforcement, he walked away scot-free. And prosecutors can ask a state appeals court for clarifications and rulings in the middle of the case. They don't have to wait until a verdict comes down, but that is unusual. Judge Schroeder didn't dismiss the gun charge until minutes before closing arguments began. Nicole? Yeah, Rudy, that really is interesting. So had he been carrying a short barrel, uh, the charge could have stuck. Very interesting uh, detail there. We appreciate you explaining that for us. All right, so... Today's verdict, obviously a lot to digest, so to help us better understand what happened in court and what could be next, Angela Sinadella joins us live. She's an attorney and News Nation legal analyst. Angela, you've joined us a few times this week. We appreciate you coming back for this verdict. Thank you for having me. All right, so we just heard Ruta Bay's breakdown of Wisconsin gun laws there. Um, so talk about how did the specifics of the laws potentially influence the jury's decisions? Entirely. So I think what's important to understand about juries is that they're not supposed to come into this with any political opinions or any bias or anything outside of the specific statutes and the facts that they are presented with. So in this case here, they looked at the videos, they looked at the facts, and they made very specific, narrow decisions that aren't supposed to have wide-reaching political effects. And Angela, we know, you know, again, at one point the, the jury had asked uh, for some clarification. They had a question there. Are you at all surprised that the verdict was consistent on all counts? Did you expect or think maybe there'd be a guilty verdict on at least one of the counts? I mean, obviously he was facing five counts. I did. I think it was a surprise that he was acquitted across the board. Generally, acquittals tend to come earlier, and the more that juries deliberate, it's generally not so good for the defendants. So it was surprising here that they all agreed on acquittals across the board. And we heard a little bit uh, about it in, in Rudebay's piece there. The case we know hinged on self-defense. Explain how the defense was successful because Rittenhouse was out past curfew. He was carrying that assault rifle uh, during those protests and prosecutors had argued that he initiated the violence. So why didn't that stick? So self-defense here is, is so interesting because it's not even that Kyle's team had to prove that he acted in self-defense. It's that the prosecution had to disprove it in order for that claim to not stick. And here it seems the prosecution did not sufficiently disprove it. So what this means is that the jury did not think that Kyle provoked it. They did not think that 
by AR-15 there, that that was provocation enough to limit his right to self-defense. So I do think that there's a lot here regarding self-defense that the jury really pontificated on and speculated about, and I'm sure that's ultimately where this entire case came down to. All right, so you're saying there, you know, the prosecution did not prove it. Let's also talk about the count that was thrown out, what Rita Bay really just told us about. So it was a misdemeanor. It was in relation to the definition of a long gun. Um, obviously, what Kyle was carrying did not meet that definition. Is it possible that a variation of that charge could be brought, or at this point, would that be double jeopardy? At this point, I don't believe anything will be brought towards him. The only thing I can think of would be a civil suit from the victim's families because they still have that avenue to file wrongful death claims. But criminally, he is not going to be charged for having a gun or for anything. He is he's free from prison at this point. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about that. How does how does Kyle Rittenhouse move forward and live a quote unquote normal life at this point? You know, based on our country's judicial system, as you just said, he is not guilty. He's free to go about his business. But is that even possible considering the level of national attention this case is receiving? It is going to be extremely difficult for him to reintegrate, as frankly, it's difficult for any defendant, especially in a high profile case like this. That is not something that as a lawyer I could help him with, but I understand that this is going to be a, you know, a process for sure. And my last question for you, Angela, and, and I don't, this really is going to you know, ask you to maybe step outside uh, of, of your, lawyer, your lawyer hat there, take that off a bit. But you know, P, you know, people, uh, and when it comes to this case, people feel very strongly about it. So people feel that you know, he, he was right to, to get off, to not be charged. And there are other people who, on the flip side, feel like you know, justice was not served here. What, what, does today, what, what does today's decision, what does this case really tell us about our judicial system? I think it tells us about how the jury applied the facts in this precise case. So people will read into this and you will help people you will hear people saying that this is a referendum on the second amendment or on self defense or on racism. But you have to understand that the jury here is specifically instructed to not take any of that into account to only look at whether or not the prosecution proved in this case beyond a reasonable doubt that he was guilty. That means that the jury had to be over 95% sure that the prosecution proved or disproved self-defense. So I think it's very dangerous for people to take this and say this means X, Y, Z about our country. I think truly it means the jury did their job here very narrowly, very specifically, which is all you can ask any jury to do in a criminal justice case. And last question, considering he was found not guilty, I told you the other one was the last question. I just thought of another one. Uh, you are a lawyer. So, you know, now that obviously hindsight always 2020, would you have done something different were you a prosecutor in this case, looking back and seeing what happened, mistakes that were made, et cetera, et cetera? I was surprised towards the end of the trial how I didn't feel the prosecution was focusing on disproving self-defense specifically. So once you're aware that self-defense is the entire defense claim and the prosecution has the burden to disprove it beyond a reasonable doubt, had I been the prosecutor in that case, I would have focused on it. But the closing arguments I thought really focused more on just the threat. I didn't think it really focused on that specifically. Angela Sinadella, we appreciate your expertise as always. Thank you once again.